Broadcasting live from the Subaru of Gwinnett Studio inside the Sonesta Gwinnett Place Atlanta Hotel. It's time for Gwinnett Business Radio. Hello and welcome to a very special episode of Gwinnett Business Radio here on Business Radio X. Mike Salmon alongside Stephen Julian broadcasting live from the Subaru of Gwinnett Studio here inside the beautiful Sonesta Gwinnett Place Atlanta Hotel. And today we are celebrating eight years of this, our signature show and podcast, Gwinnett Business Radio, a show that we launched exactly eight years ago this week, November 6th, 2012. Back, Stephen, when you had hair. No, I didn't have no, hair okay. back in 2012. And, and for those keeping count, we are up to something like 300 and There's a blank line episodes. on your page. I know. I forgot to write it down. It's, it's <laughs> over there. I'll get it. But over 300 shows since then. Back on this date in 2012, our first ever guest on the inaugural show, just for the record, were Vince De Silva and Matt Bemister with the Gwinnett Chamber of Commerce, Brandy Swanson with Sandler Training by Simon, and George Lewis with Taylor Construction. Now on our fourth ever show, this was November 20th, 2012, Steve and Julian, you came on as one of my guests to talk about your financial services business. You joined me the following week as a co-host, and I have not been able to shake you ever since. So I didn't have hair when you started, but I was with Edward Jones when you started, and I'm no longer with them, but I'm still doing (laughs) the same type work. But thankfully, yeah, you invited me back as a co-host, and I've been hanging on ever since the more things change the more they stay the same you you how many times have you fired me never oh okay never thanks. yeah <laughs> for it's real been, it's been a lot of fun yes it has well today eight glorious years later we are joined by four guests that are not only important to me that i have really a lot of respect for but four individuals that have been instrumental in the growth of this studio not only surviving eight years but thriving over that time to become the voice of business in Gwinnett and that's something that we're very proud of Joining us on the show is Rick Strawn. He is the owner and president of Paradigm Security Services and host of Case in Point. It's a weekly show and podcast here on Business Radio X. And Rick, in about two weeks, you'll be celebrating your 100th episode with us. Yeah, I always wanted to be a centurion. Yeah. Nice. <laughs> and you have succeeded in that. It's probably the only way I get there. So thank you for joining us this morning. Thank you. Also, Steve Kendrick is here. He's the Executive General Manager of Subaru of Gwinnett and the Infinity of Gwinnett. And for over five years now, as all our listeners know by Amen. now, Amen. How, how can you not know, Subaru of Gwinnett has been the exclusive studio naming rights partner. Our home was officially christened the Subaru of Gwinnett Studio back in April of 2015. And Steve has stayed with us ever since. Amen. So Welcome, Steve. Thank you for coming this morning. Great to see you. I am happy to be here. Now, one of my favorite hosts over the years. Sorry, no offense, Rick. Rick. Gee, gee, thanks. <laughs> <laughs> I shouldn't have said it with, with Rick in the room. You shouldn't have said it with such excitement. Has been Tiffany Crewmans. Tiffany was the first ever winner on ABC's hit TV show Shark Tank 11 years ago. That was when Barbara Corcoran, she invested $50,000 into your singing medicine dispenser for children, mm-hmm. Ava the Elephant. And... Since then, you have come on. You've been a former host of the Tiffany Crewman Show here out of this studio. That was in 2016 through 2018. You're as busy today as you've ever been, so I'm so happy that you were able to make time to come by and see us. So great to see you, Thank Tiffany. Thank you for having me. Thank you for allowing me to steal your co-host for my, my continued show for the last three years. Partial yeah. stealing. <laughs> I still am here, but I help her too. Yeah, we'll talk about that as well. And last but certainly not least, the man, the myth, the legend in his own mind, <laughs> <laughs> traveling all the way from our corporate studio in Sandy Springs and his home in Marietta, Stone Payton. Thank you, Stone, for joining us today. Well, it's absolutely my pleasure, man. What a marvelous location. You're like, I don't know, 100 yards from a Waffle House. This is perfect. Oh, yeah. Isn't that awesome? <laughs> it gets no better. Yeah. Well, it's quite an honor to have all of you here today, and uh, every one of you has been a vital part of the studio's growth since we launched eight years ago. I would be remiss if I did not mention the over 2,500 business leaders and community leaders that have come through these doors here in Gwinnett County and from the metro Atlanta area since we opened the studio eight years ago. Also want to recognize the Gwinnett Chamber of Commerce. They've been supporters of us from day one and to this day the Chamber is one of the biggest partners as we both share our pro-business message. 
Also, a shout out to the Sinesto Gwinnett Place Atlanta Hotel, this place that we are sitting in today. Management here opened their doors to us four years ago. They invited us to move our studio from right down the road. We were right across the street from Infinity of Gwinnett. Four years ago, we moved here into the Sinesta, and they have been great hosts ever since. And there's so many wonderful people to, to thank all of the, the, the hosts of our shows that are currently here, our, our former shows as well. And we want to thank all of them for allowing us to produce, distribute, and market their radio shows and their podcasts. Now, these are shows that you can find on Apple iTunes, iHeartRadio, Stitcher, Spotify, Google Podcasts, YouTube. We're all over the place, all those podcast platforms. And, of course, these shows are also available on our amazing website, businessradiox.com, which had over 40 million downloads, live listens, and on-demand plays just in the last quarter alone. And allow me to brag just a little bit more, if that's okay. This show, Gwinnett Business Radio, our signature show, has produced episodes that have peaked at over 200,000 hits over the years on several occasions. <laughs> Dang it. <laughs> Let me ring the bell Because of the Steven. great special effects that we have, right? <laughs> yeah. yeah. Those numbers kind of bring me to Stone. And Stone, when you hear those types of numbers and you look at the Business Radio X studios that are popping up all over the country right now and all the markets that you're serving, when you and, and, and the co-founder, Lee Cantor, you know, came up with this idea, hatched this idea of using podcasts to help businesses, did you ever envision it growing to this point? Uh, well, no, of course not. I mean, and we're so humbled and, and, and blown away from it. When I first met Lee Cantor, I walked into a studio a little bit like this. The space wasn't nearly as, as nice. But, I mean, the skies parted, the doves flew, and Lee just did this marvelous he facilitated this terrific conversation where I got a chance to talk about me and my business and the why behind it. I kind of horned my way into this the way, you know, uh, Steve Julian did with you. Amen. <laughs> but we could have never anticipated this. We had a great little thing going. We were making a little money. We knew we were hel helping folks. We were having fun. And then we found this guy, this Mike Salmon guy. Mm -hmm. We said, I, I wonder if we can teach him what we think <laughs> we know about this to help people and make money. And then, no, uh, you took it and ran mm -hmm. with it and helped us expand. But, no, we could have never anticipated this, man. It's, it's, been, it's been wonderful. A fateful meeting about eight and a half years ago when <laughs> a, a friend of ours, uh, Chris Henley, uh, actually introduced us to, yeah. to each other. Yeah. And, uh, and the rest is history. After I met with Lee and Stone about this whole idea, you and I, I think, we were coaching youth baseball together. We were. At Our the sons time. were playing. Yeah. And I ran the idea past you. You were kind of my sounding board, and 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 you could have nipped it in the bud. Yeah. I'll but, never, but you actually said, "Go for I'll it." I'll never forget it. We were at a Starbucks in Swanee, and he lays this all out to me, and I said, "The first thing I'm going to tell you is I'm incredibly jealous mm -mm. because this sounds like <laughs> such a fantastic mm -hmm. opportunity." I said, "Number two, I don't see how you cannot do this. How could it not work out? You know, Stone, you and Lee need to give a lot of credit because of the way you set it up." It was so pro-business. It was pro-business for Mike. It was a good opportunity to step into without, you know, mortgaging his future to be able to do this. And, and, it, and it's because you gave the opportunity to Mike so that he could give the opportunity to the 2,500 business owners who've come through our door and been able to promote uh, their pro-business message. So I, I was incredibly jealous from day one. <laughs> well, I'm delighted to hear it. But, I mean, it turns out that helping folks can be a very lucrative business. And fun. Mike. Yeah. I mean, the <laughs> more the way, you serve, the more you get back. I'm stealing your phrase, a horned in. I, I think that's it. I, we, you and I, <laughs> we apparently both know how, how to horn in on great that's opportunities. Right. So anyway, we, we end up opening up the studio and was fortunately fortunate to find a couple of businesses early on that said, yeah, I want to get into the podcast world. Then about a year after we opened the studio, this gentleman down here, Steve Kendra, came on this show to talk about Infinity of Gwinnett and the car dealerships that he runs here in the, in the county. That was December 19th, Steve, 2013, that you came on the show. And a year and a half after that, I went to your office, met with you, and, and through this crazy idea of a studio naming rights partnership, and, and you decided to brand everything Subaru of Gwinnett. So, so we have signage all over the studio. Everything we do digitally has got Subaru attached to it. I would have probably tattooed it on my head if you had asked. <laughs> Fortunately, you did not ask me to do that. But you came on board and you said yes pretty much on the spot. What do you remember from, from back then? We, we got together, we talked about it, and, and what made you decide to, to actually be a part of this? At that time... Subaru had really just exploded. And what I mean by exploding, we were a small, as far as volume size dealership here in Gwinnett with uh, Subaru. We were selling about 35 new Subarus a month and about 
25 used cars, so a total of about 60 cars a month. Last month, uh, we sold 240 new and used. So oh, we get a bell it, for that. Uh, <laughs> um, it, it Subaru as a as a brand really exploded, and I thought, what better opportunity than to have th- this backdrop, as I would say, uh, to support and help support the community uh, through its businesses, because a lot of our automobile car owners, whether it be this the Subaru product or other brand X are business owners. And mm-hmm. so we, uh, you know, it was a no brainer for me. I love to hear that. And, and another thing I love to hear, you shared a story with me a couple of years ago. You were telling me you were having lunch with uh, David Dickey, Dickey Broadcasting. They have uh, some radio stations in Atlanta. You also sponsor 680 The Fan, which is a sports talk station here in town. And you told me you were telling Mr. Dickey about this cool thing that you had done with Business Radio X, how you were the naming rights partner. And when I heard you tell that story to, to him, I was like, that made me feel all warm and fuzzy inside. <laughs> well, David, in his own right, is an excellent businessman. Mm-hmm. And when I told him of your new journey, his eyes popped wide open because he had not heard of anything like that. And so for, he, for it to grab his attention, obviously it was a great idea then and it's a great idea now. And I like hooking on to great ideas. I don't come up with them. I just <laughs> share with them. There's another person. <laughs> another horn in horn, or... horn in on great ideas. I like it. One of the things that I probably have not been good at with you is actually communicating that just the millions and millions of impressions that Subaru and Subaru of Gwinnett have probably received yeah. through us. Because you think about it, every single photograph, you can't have a photograph <laughs> in this place without that logo being somewhere. Right. Audio, you know, Subaru is mentioned by all the hosts. That, I mean, Rick, you do your show, and every day you say, hey, we're broadcasting from the mm-hmm. Subaru of Gwinnett Studio. You did the same thing, Tiffany, when mm-hmm. you, I mean, mm-hmm. so I probably haven't related that to you, but the millions of impressions yeah. and right. hits that Subaru has gotten just for that partnership. So thank you, because you you really got it going. And and, and really, one other thing, too, I think it gave us credibility. And, Stone, you might want to chime in on this, too. I think people didn't know what Business Radio X was back then. But mm-hmm. all of a sudden, having the Subaru name tied in with us, I think it gave us some instant credibility. And since that time, we've had companies like, you know, Corporate Waffle House, mm-hmm. you know, Eastside Medical Center now are partners. I, and I think it was Subaru that opened the yeah. door. We're going to be announcing, if not within a couple of weeks, maybe within days, a major bank is going to be actually the exclusive sponsor of, of this show. Awesome. I think the sponsorship of, of Subaru gave us that credibility. Well, I can absolutely tell you that's the truth. We're in 25 markets now. We have 10 physical studios, and we have plans for all 25 of those markets to have physical studios in the, in the near term. And I can tell you in each and every one of those conversations, I talk about the Subaru studio and Mike Salmon. <laughs> so so I, should, I should probably be writing a commission check or something for, for Steve. It's, I'll take it. You can horn in on that, Steve. You can absolutely <laughs> horn in on that. The other thing I was going to say is I, I would simply, and Mike, your point of credibility is huge, but the other thing it does is there are a lot of different types of cars, but Subaru is one of those car names that everybody likes. You have Ford and GM and you know, other car companies fight with each other, but Subaru is, the, you know, is one of the types of cars, one of the car lines that nobody dislikes Subaru. They're just known as great cars. They run, you know, they, they don't have a lot of problems. So for us to be to be affiliated with that has been fantastic. And like Mike said, all the pictures, all the tags, all the, and it just looks great, just like a Subaru car. So is this when I do the Subaru read? Good timing. Sure, go ahead. See, this is what I'm here for, to make sure that we pay proper homage. So as we say on every Gwinnett Business Radio episode and across all other episodes love is what makes a subaru a subaru our listeners can enjoy big savings and a hassle-free experience at subaru of gwinnett where people sell cars visit subaru of gwinnett.com and join their family today or come in and see the difference if you're already a subaruist then make sure you check out all their social media pages for the latest news offers and community events well done thank you great so so here we are once once subaru came on board we were kind of off and running 
And so now the pressure was kind of off. We could talk to folks about doing shows and things like that. And the thing that we do really well is we give the, the little guy, the small business owner, a chance mm -hmm. to be heard. One of the things that happened early on is in one of their shows, we had Tiffany Crewmans come in. I think like a publicist or someone from you might have mm -hmm. contacted us. And said, I don't know. Hey, uh, wasn't it Cornerstone co-working? Maybe. I think it was somebody from Cornerstone. Some, and said, listen, the lady from Shark Tank, she was on the first ever show, and you know, I think she'd be great. We were so excited to talk to you that we did something we normally never do. We had you come in as the only guest on the show, because typically when we do the show, we have two or three businesses. Mm -hmm. For that one, we got dressed up. We had our oh, ties yeah. on. <laughs> yeah, Mike <laughs> called me and was like, you got to be serious. And you got to dress You got to dress professionally. And gotta we had you come shower. on. Yeah, to, I took a shower. To yeah. talk about okay. your Shark Tank experience yeah. and everything you're up to now. And that eventually morphed into you coming on and having your own show. And having Barbara Corcoran as my first guest. Do you remember when we yes. had a sound issue and we couldn't even hear her? It was terrible. We're and it wasn't on your end. It wasn't even, I think it was on her end, the sound. But yeah, it was It was not It's pretty, just typical phones. Of course, I call her in on the first show. I'm yeah, like, so we had really? Barbara Corcoran on the first show. Yeah. And you, you have not slowed down since. No, I have not. I have since launched a new company called Mom Genius. Um, so I took uh, that first product and uh, basically turned it into a full product development and distribution company. And so that's what I've been doing along with and you took uh, your Product first, Genius. Yeah, you took your first show, yes. Tiffany Crewman yes. show, which we did here for mm -hmm. two years, right, Mike? Mm -hmm. Two and a half years. And then you decided to I got an offer to show. move over to um, iHeartRadio. Yep. And so I moved to that platform. Um, how many years ago now? It's Three? Been about, well, two yeah. years. Two years ago. And, it, and you and changed you the name to... Pro, yeah, you did. Yeah, yeah. Uh, Mike let me... Yeah, spread yeah. my wings and co-host <laughs> yes. a second show. No, you're just kind of sticky. You just stick to everybody. I horned in on... <laughs> I, I got, no, I said I, I wasn't going to do it in. without you. Yeah. I was very, very firm in that. Okay. So, you, so we started Product Genius, yes. right? So, Tiffany, I want to ask you. So when, when we started the show, tell everybody... So some people are listening, have either never been a guest or just right. been a guest and never been a host. Talk mm -hmm. about that transition from being a guest to being a host. What was that like? Um, well, at first I thought you guys were crazy because Mike, Mike came to me and said, why don't you do your own show? And I said, you're insane. I hate the sound of my voice. I don't <laughs> know what I talk about. And then you guys convinced me to try it. And I tried it. And for at least four to six months, I literally came in every single time and went, what am I doing here? Not because I didn't have something to share. I just wasn't clear yet on just how much I could help others in, in my position. And once that became clear, we were on fire. The shows were better. Um, it was very exciting. We could, we could again, expose other small businesses. So I, I got to highlight other Shark Tank companies, you know, if they wanted to be on and share their story. But we also got to highlight countless over the last three years other small businesses and, and entrepreneurs. And that was, the big, uh, that was the big aha moment for you. It was mm -hmm. about three or four months in. You realized, wait a minute, rather than talking to all business owners, let me talk to the people mm -hmm. who were like me, small business owners yep. or entrepreneurs or people who want to develop products. And when you when you got that mm -hmm. and you said, that's who I'm going to talk to, that's what my show is going to be about, you found your voice. Not just that, but I had had such an overwhelming response from Shark Tank fans over the years of them wanting advice. And it was always the same questions. I mean, the same 50 questions over and over again. And rather than respond to each of them, which I couldn't do, this allowed me to cover topics in each show and then share those episodes. So now when people tag me, I can say, go back, you know, episode four, we covered, you know, mm -hmm. product development with this. So it's been a good resource for me, you know, to be able to direct people and let them still learn from my journey, but not making me connect one-on-one -on -one every single time. So she went from reluctant guest yeah. to really <laughs> reluctant host <laughs> to finding success on Business Radio X. Yes. So the big question is, can you now stand the sound of your voice? No. You still I can't. Still hate it. Yeah. <laughs> Steven's always like, did you listen to that one episode? I'm like, I haven't listened to a single one in two years, but okay. Don't, don't say that to the public. <laughs> Well, I just don't listen back because I know I did. I said what I said. You know, you there's no the going time. back. Right. I think also you gave us a little name recognition as well because I think some mm -hmm. people knew who Tiffany Crewmans was. Mm -hmm. If you Google, it's it's all out there, and so that, I think that that helped us as well. Absolutely. As we, as we grew everything here. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. So we were so excited to have you. We hated to see you leave, but yeah. but once you're part, it's like the mob. <laughs> Once you're part of this family, you, That's you, right. you can never leave. <laughs> That's right. So you're still part of our family. Absolutely. We've pulled her back in. Is that what you're saying? <laughs> exactly. So we've had so many great hosts, and, and the gentleman sitting to your left, Tiffany, uh, Rick Strawn, the, the president of Paradigm Security Services. Rick, we met, I guess, at a uh, chamber event over the years, just kind of got to know each other. Never yeah. talked to you ever about this opportunity. And then one day I just said, I don't know why, I just liked you, and we connected, and I said, 
Rick, why don't we talk about having a show? And I came to your office one day, sat down, I think, with you, and I think with your wife as well. And we talked about so. how the show could, you know, help Paradigm get the name out there and how we could maybe use it for business development. We haven't really followed our plan exactly. That's an understatement. <laughs> yeah, in the last <laughs> several months, your show's kind of become a political show. You've had a lot of political candidates come on. Yeah, it, it's, been, it's been crazy. I don't know what I'm going to do now the political season's over. I guess, <laughs> I guess I'm one of those few people that's glad that the political season never ends anymore. Yeah, you had some very interesting shows and some great guests. Yeah, well, the original reason that, you know, we talked was the idea to come on and get guests in that I wanted to do business with, build those relationships, open it up, and then follow it up and get try to get business. And it's been really strange the way it's morphed into uh, most of what I have on here are nonprofits, and it gives them a voice to get their message out so people can hear that. And unfortunately, according to my wife, that's what I enjoy doing. So needless to say, we haven't reached out to enough of the businesses to bring them in that get business. What I've done is I've spent the whole time doing the, the nonprofits and the different things like that and then going ahead. And when the political season started, I started having some of the politicians just say, hey, I'd like to come on and, and talk. And, and I try to help them out. Well, you got a servant's heart, which is why you yes. kind of fit in with the rest of us here. Yeah, well, I enjoy it. My wife would like my heart to change just a little <laughs> bit of direction. But, you know, it's one of those things where you do what you feel comfortable doing and what you enjoy doing. And, you know, you talked about we met and you don't know why. I have an effect on people. The insanity sets in. <laughs> so uh, at least my wife would tell you I drive her crazy. Well, here we are now, just a couple of weeks away from your 100th episode. It only seems like two. You know, 200 it, or two? 200. <laughs> um, you know, it's really interesting when you sit there and you start thinking about getting the people to come on and who am I going to get. And then all of a sudden you look down and the month is booked. And it's really kind of enjoyable to reach out to try to get these. Renee over here in the background is because uh, I usually tag her and say, find me a guest, find me somebody to come on. She's, she does all the grunt work. Well, she she does a lot of it. I'll give her that. You know, my wife calls her my second wife. So, you know, she spends more time doing the, doing the stuff and getting it prepared. And I make sure she's on every copy of everything so it'll help remind me of what's going on. <laughs> well, and we say at Business Radio X that we're the voice of business. And your your Business Radio X show, you've you've kind of found the voice of and people would say, well, it's not business, but nonprofit is no, still is. part of business, and politics no. is still part of business. Nonprofit is a big business, and the business of politics, which is truly a business, yep. uh, I mean, they're all businesses, and they all need that voice. So, so what I love is, in doing the show, you've kind of found momentarily where you need to be, and that will always be part of going forward. Hopefully, you know, if you want to shift to find more businesses to talk to, official businesses, I guess I would say, great. I'm sure you've had some of those. But, oh, I have. But you've found that, and, and, and trust me, in a world where people feel like it's very hard to talk politics, you've been able to talk politics. Yeah, and it's I'm, needed. Discourse I was going to say needed. the same thing. He gave them a positive way to share yeah. a political message because usually you don't see it unless it's something bad in the news, right? When yeah. do they get a chance to just yeah. talk? There's no yelling on your show, right? No, now. there's no yelling, and <laughs> we don't do negatives on the other candidates. Yeah. Mm -hmm. uh, it's all about what are, I think one of the things that, that is missing on all of the broadcasts and all that kind of stuff is what is the real message of what you think of the issues, what you how you feel about them. It's always – a discussion about what the other person why they mm -hmm. why they aren't good let's talk about what your positions are and what you feel is positive and how you would address this and go from a positive note because th there's just too much negativity around anyway amen we mentioned 100 episodes now and uh, just to, you're, you're catching up i just double checked and uh, this is the 360th episode of, of this show Ooh, 360 wow. of these I think there's only a couple other shows that we've ever had that have had more shows than you Rick uh, we had a show called On the Money uh, that was here yep. for about four years then Silver Lining in the Cloud was which was with us for about six years but you're you're right there in 
fourth place, so you're in the top five. Yeah, you know, hey, it's <laughs> top something. <laughs> That's great. What, and I'm going to ask all of you maybe the biggest surprise since since kind of becoming part of this family. And, again, I use the word family a lot, Stone. I think I get that from you because we really are a family. Yeah, I feel um, that way. And I'll start with you, Stone. What has been your biggest surprise about Gwinnett, you know, since, since we did launch eight years ago? How quickly a local business community or a specific ecosystem like the startup community or the tech community or entities that are focused on helping underserved populations, how quickly they embrace the idea and want to participate and help us in any way that they can. And not just here in the Atlanta market. I mean, we're doing stuff in Columbus and Dayton and Detroit and the Bay Area out San Francisco. I hoped, but I never anticipated that those people and the folks that they're trying to serve would embrace this idea so quickly and so fully Mm -hmm. it blows me away the biggest surprise for me has been the impact we always joke that we had three lists I felt like I had three listeners you know my mom my dad and (laughs) maybe a long distant cousin or something but I would get messages from all over the country of people actually listening to the message that we were speaking about product development And they had made changes or they had made huge business deals because of a little piece of advice that we gave them. So the impact really is what has blown me away. One of the things that we talk about a lot when we're talking with prospective clients and people to have podcasts Mm is obviously the marketing and and getting the name out there and Mm -hmm. so forth, but the relationships that they can build in the studio. So I love seeing that. That's always been fun to see relationships Mm -hmm. that actually ended up becoming business. But also when I would hear from a host saying, I actually got a call from in Ohio or wherever and got business out of it Mm -hmm. because today with the internet you can do business pretty much anywhere in the world so I love hearing those success stories when I hear clients that they you know somebody heard the show and and this is what happened I have to say that's kind of what I miss about being in this studio is because it was in and out and seeing so many other business owners we have we're in our own studio not our own studio but we're by ourselves but it's different right it is different Uh, there's not that community yeah there are plenty of people podcasting and I'm not throwing any other podcasters under the bus there are some great ones I love to listen to but so much of podcasting is about the person getting their message out. And I, you know, been doing this now with you almost since the beginning, almost since the beginning. And you talk about, you know, business that happens. The most amazing thing is when you have two or three guests and the one guest starts listening to the other guest. And by the end of the show, and it has happened numerous times where after the show, one guest turns to the other guest and goes, you, mm-hmm. we need to talk. Mm-hmm. We need to talk. Give me your card. And that's business, right? That's how business happens. To watch it happen on the air is just one of the coolest things. It's just so cool. It's such a fun networking versus yeah. like the events where you actually have to right. stand around and force it, right? Yeah. Well, that's, that's been my This favorite. is a great way to meet people, too. Meet those business leaders you want to meet mm-hmm. because I'm not one to do cold calls or, or knock on doors and so forth. But, but it's, it's easy to invite someone to come onto a show. It is. And the other thing about this that I love is people either get it or they don't. And, you know, Stone, you talked about you came on Lee's show and you got it, right? The the heavens parted. I like that phrase. You either get it or you don't. And going back to Mike, when you and I talked at that Starbucks, I I said, I said, I can see how there are going to be people who just don't get it. They don't understand what's going on here. There have been times where I've talked to people and go, you should come on our show. And they're like, and they just don't get it. But so many people, as they get it, they also go, I don't get why you're bringing me on the show. You mean I don't have to pay to be a guest? I don't have to, what, what's, so what's it going to cost me? What are you going to ask for me? And it's really just giving first, and then we can do business afterward if you want. What's really cool, too, is now when we go to any event and we say we're with Business Radio X, people know who we are. I mean, we've won. We've got the award down there, the Chamber Small Business of the Year for 2019. We like to say we're award-winning. But, you know, <laughs> you don't anymore. You stop doing that. Well, I, I, I'll, I'll, I'll start. You don't again. want to jinx this year's award. Dang, I need to get an award somewhere. <laughs> we'll just give sure you one. It's a major award. Yeah, you guys give me one and I'll give you one. And then we we'll can give you a major award from Fred, Fred Gilly. <laughs> Fred Gilly. Inside <laughs> Joe Clear. But to be able to go to chamber events and business networking events, and Rick, you've seen it too, mm-hmm. where I'll ask who here is familiar with Business Radio X or, or more to the point, either they've been on a show or their mm-hmm. company has mm-hmm. been represented on a show. And more than, I would say, two thirds, mm-hmm. Amanda, would have, can preach to this. She's gone to a lot of the meetings with me. Raise their hand. Yeah, we've we've been on a show. Or so my husband said that yesterday. He goes, "Did you know that the founder of my company? He's an electrical engineer at Titan Electric, and he said the the founder of my company was on, was on last week. <laughs> yeah, he was on last I was week. Like, 
Oh, was it last yeah. week? Oh, wow. Okay. And I'll go into somebody's office and just someone that I'm just meeting for the first time, and I'll see the Business Radio X mug up on their mm-hmm. shelf. Mm-hmm. And, and Rick, we since you've been doing the show, since you've been doing the show, you're almost at 100 episodes. Have you found that as you now network after? I mean, because you met Mike through the chamber, you're still part of the chamber. Has it changed since doing the show? As far as the Radio X, yeah. Are you are you more of a celebrity now? I guess that's really what I'm asking, Rick. <laughs> um, I would say I'm not really that much of a celebrity, yeah. but th- it's amazing how many of the people do know that I have a, a show on Radio X. That makes you a celebrity, Rick. Oh, you don't okay. want to admit it, but it does. All right, well, me and Red Skelton will get together. For those that don't remember Red. Google him. Yeah, <laughs> Google him. But, yeah, it's it's interesting when you go somewhere. And well, I was out at the Chamber Golf Tournament the other day, and I never can figure out his last name, Matt Mock. Matt said, you know, you've got to get me on your show, so he's coming on next Wednesday. I've got people that are insisting that, you know, you need to bring me on your show. Uh, the Mana Fund, yeah. Jeannie Burnett. Jeannie uh, used to be on their board a long time ago, and she's said, when are you going to have me on your show? It's amazing that when they want, when they reach out to you and yeah. want to come on the show. That's cool. He's sought after. Th- again, Rick Strong, celebrity. Well, you know, how many, I mean, I get a lot of clicks. What can I say? (laughs) Anything, Steve Kendrick, that has surprised you over the last five years now that you've been the naming rights partner? uh, You actually, we actually are in a two-year deal now. We go until the end of 2021. So that's exciting, too. Yes, and as we've been talking, and I've been doing a lot of listening, as you told me to do that. (laughs) um, We want you to talk, too. I know. I'm just kidding. But uh, the parallel growth of... Our three businesses, and when I'm saying by our three businesses, your business, our local dealership, and then the growth of Subaru nationally. Yeah. And it, it has paralleled all the way through. And sometimes you don't have that same integration, that same parallel. And in this case, it has just been the same type of growth. I think that has been uh, the most pleasant surprise of everything. The other part of it is is that the name recognition that Subaru of Gwinnett now has in Gwinnett County, yeah. going from where we were to where we are now, and your affiliation, and I have to say your affiliation with the chamber and a lot of businesses that are tuned in or whatever they may be on this podcast, a lot of them in the Gwinnett area are with the chamber. And your association with them only enhances this product. And I I think the relationship uh, has worked hand-in-hand now going on, and as you say, through uh, 2021. Well, it wasn't a mistake that we had representatives from the chamber on our very first show. Mm -hmm. And then, of course, the first meeting I ever had when we opened the studio was with the Gwinnett Chamber. And thank goodness they saw what we were trying to do, and they they believed in our mission of serving small businesses. And so they've been a big part of it. But Subaru, you've had like seven or eight, nine years now in a row, you've had record years. It just continues to grow. Only until uh, March when COVID, that is when uh, when it stopped. Uh, where we had month over month, year over year growth, wow. and it was for 96 months. Yeah. Wow, amazing! And now it's restarted, and so they're back on another streak. So that's yeah. great. I'd love to say that we get all the credit for that, but <laughs> but you've done a great job getting the name of the community, not just here with Business Radio X, but a lot of the other things that you're doing in all of Atlanta. So I think that's a credit to you. Well, it's not really a credit to me. It's a credit to my people. <laughs> Yeah. Yeah. Uh, in our industry, we're known for having somewhat of a turnover issue. And at our dealerships, both of them, if you saw someone eight years ago, chances are today mm-hmm. when you walk in, you're going to see that same person again. I love uh, that. And that could be yeah. anywhere from uh, our detailers to our top management. So. Yeah. I'm very I, I if there's anything I am proud of the most mm-hmm. it is that and and Mike you talk you about you talk about on our show how many people we've interviewed thousand people and, and one of the jokes Mike and I have an inside joke and I'll, I'll confess it to the general public sometimes there are people who come up to us and go hey how you doing hey and I have I no idea who they are I know I interviewed them on this show but I can't remember because mm-hmm. it was like three years ago uh, if it was three months ago I'd feel bad but three years come on I, I can't remember that I will say this when Steve Kendrick came in and did his first guest, 
I still remember, and that, and I remember it every time because we say where people sell cars. You guys wrote that for us to say that was you were proud of that back then, and you were preaching that, and it and it's been obvious, and it continues to be obvious that real people sell cars, people who you care about and take care of, and they're good people and they do good work. And so there's very little turnover at your dealership because it's so well run. So kudos to you. Well, sir. thank you. Yeah. Appreciate that. One of the things that I think everybody at this table will appreciate that I've always remembered about Steve is because I, I am as loyal as they get, I, I like to think. Mm -hmm. And when, when Steve agreed on the spot to, to become the naming rights sponsor uh, of our studio, I said, Steve, as long as you're with me, I'll never increase the price on you. It'll always be the same. And Steve, and you'll appreciate this, Stone, Steve said, don't ever say that. Because that's just not good business. Well, I, and, I'll let you say that. <laughs> <laughs> well, the, the deal applies for you as, as well. But I remember Steve saying, and, and I have held that true because I, I still believe that. I just I just won't because you took a chance with us when you didn't you know you didn't know us from Adam. We were just getting started, and and I just believe in taking care of the people that took care of you. Yeah. So uh, we, you know we have that. So I, I just, but but the fact that you said don't ever say that because that's just not you were just helping give me advice. And, well, and there's and, a there's a reason why it's called business radio X. <laughs> yeah, maybe it wasn't great business for me to say that. I have a great idea. Go up on his price and just apply it to mine. <laughs> That's oh. business. Well, <laughs> that might be bad business, though. Uh, not for me. <laughs> I always, I always believe, and, and Amanda has learned this as we've, as she's been part of our staff now for two years, that a bird in the hand is worth two in the bush. Mm -hmm. I mean, if you got someone that believes in you and yep. they're willing to write a check and invest in you, right. absolutely, you, you take good care mm -hmm. of them. And and I can tell you. In, in, in the five years that Subaru has been a, a not not only has we not even talked to another car dealership about doing anything with mm -hmm. us any kind of sponsorship on this show specifically we, we won't even have car dealers come on as as guests the same for it's us just our loyalty yeah. we've got two partners that have been yeah. with us for we call them partners sponsors for three years yeah. and wouldn't I would never consider another partly because I believe in what they do I work with both right. of them you know in business but I feel the same and way three years ago I bought a Subaru Mm -hmm. from Steve's dealership and so I believe in the product as well practice what you preach so, well listen I want to thank all of you for for joining us you know we'll have to do this again in eight years let's Just go don't wait so long this time I, amen maybe two amen. years and we'll do a 10 year 10 show 10 year show. Yeah. Ten year show do we do a clip show is this where we go to the clips now that's what they do on TV oh all the bloopers yeah yeah <laughs> oh god that'll all have be some mine of those. We, we don't <laughs> have four hours to kill we, we created one yesterday was Raymer <laughs> Yeah, Raymer Sale nice. with EDE e Resources. Ooh, I want to see that online. Oh. But uh, let, let's just uh, maybe parting words. We'll go around the table. To, uh, Tiffany, just uh, again, we love you. Same here. I just want to thank you guys for showing me my potential. I appreciate that. And Stephen continues to do that as my co-host. He keeps me going and <laughs> reminds me we even have a show going on. <laughs> I've got three kids. I'm renovating a house and a couple businesses. So it's a little little busy around our house these days. But yeah, thank you. Thank what you what have everything. we created? Yeah, a so. monster. <laughs> Monster. So thank you, Tiffany. <laughs> Rick, the love is there as well. Thank you I for, appreciate for you know, coming on board about, about two years now and, and 100 shows in. I think it's, yeah, it's almost working on three. Oh, wait, is it going on three? You know, it's been great, and I enjoy it. I think that's what surprised me the most is how much I've enjoyed doing the show. It's just like, let's get out of the security business and let's go into doing radio. Yeah. Well, when it's time for renewal, we'll go out, get uh, Susan, your wife, get some drinks in her, and... And, well, and, 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 and after all, I've already got one thing going for me. What's it's, that? I've got the face for radio. Amen. I get a dollar every time someone says that, Absolutely. but it's usually about me. So I'll, I'll split it with you 50-50. That works. When someone says about you. But don't forget that if people still need security, they should call Paradigm Security. Absolutely. Absolutely. Anybody that does need private security in any form where you see an officer on the ground or, or patrols, and we, do, we are fixing the market, a new video monitoring that we bring in on that uh, is really an awesome awesome thing to go through contact us paradigm security <laughs> services if you need a car or a vehicle of any kind if you're creating a product do we know no, no no we're not we're not on you anymore tiffany you <laughs> oh, had your sorry. parting shot just getting it in there i thought you were going around the table <laughs> we are we are <laughs> just, we're talking about cars sorry. though it's just an odd <laughs> way of going around <laughs> do we know a car dealership that we can recommend i know, I know a great one He's sitting right over there, Steve Kendrick from Subaru of Gwinnett. But let him have the parting shot. Steve, thank you for everything. I mean, really, a lot of this would not be possible because, as I said earlier, once you came on board, the blinders were off, and it was just full force ahead. Mm -hmm. Well, it's a two-way street, and we it's been a privilege for us to be in this venture with you. And 
Kim Jones, my right arm, is here with me today, and she just passed me a little note and <laughs> to remind me of something. And I would be remiss if I did not say that in the spirit of, of love, we're entering into a time period of, of giving uh, with uh, the holiday season coming up. Mm-hmm. And our go-to sponsorship that, that we sponsor here in the Gwinnett area is Rainbow Village. And I just want to give them a shout out mm-hmm. as every year we contribute to them and uh, we, we, we share love with that, with that group. Mm-hmm. So I wanted to put a kind of a word out for them so that if anybody's thinking about that for later in the year, mm-hmm. when there's some gift giving that might be done, we'll go with them. That's They're what, awesome. Yeah, and that's what's wonderful about what our platform here is that when we want to really take care of someone like Rainbow Village, we, we have a voice, a place where we can do that. So before you Google Red Skelton, <laughs> Google Rainbow Google Village, Village and support them because love is what right. makes a Subaru. Super They're an awesome, awesome, awesome organization. Yeah. Amen. Yeah. And Steve, I know you're busy, so thank you for coming by this morning. Thank you. Thank you for bringing Kim, too. Yes. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I mean, you talk about having good people. The lady that you brought sitting right there is one of the best in the world. And Kim, thank you for all your help. And you've been great when I need to meet with Steve or, try, you know, getting with Steve is hard. I mean, you're a busy man. And, and if it weren't for Kim, I, I probably would never see you. So so thank you, Kim. <laughs> <laughs> all the emails that come from him are really from her, right? <laughs> probably. Yeah. Probably. I mean, such is oh, life, right? <laughs> <laughs> all the nice ones, anyway. Yeah. Well, I know how that is. Grenades in the same boat. It's yeah. Just, yeah. That's, that's, the right, that's the right hand. And Amanda, thank you for all your work, and Amanda's the one who keeps Mike on track. Boy, too, you're not so. kidding. The three beautiful <laughs> who's, ladies. Who's back producing there. Awesome. the show, right? Stone, you got to head back to Sandy Springs after this. I do. That's an impossible act to follow. Here, it's, it's typical Kendrick. It's typical Subaru. Yeah. You give him an opportunity to talk about what he does and what he's trying to promote. What does he do? He talks about Rainbow Village and giving. So I'm not going to even try to follow that act. I will say thank you to everyone at this table, everyone behind that partition, helping us produce this show for. For helping us live into this this mission of ours of, yeah. of genuinely trying to support and celebrate the the folks that are just out there grinding it out every mm-hmm. day trying to serve their market and their community and contribute to their profession we couldn't do it without you we wouldn't do it without you and uh, i'm humbled and grateful thanks man thank you stone for the opportunity amanda has you know this is the job that you were meant to do and we don't even call it a job i mean we, we have fun we're doing good work we're servicing people She's got her own show now that has just been gone, gone gangbusters. Talk about you know the great people with, with Kim and Renee and Amanda has been here now almost mm-hmm. two years. And we should just give them all a mic and have them have a little love fest right now in a conversation. Maybe, maybe they that, might they might talk nice about us. Maybe there, there they are. Well, they should have their own. Applause. They should have their own episode of celebrating powerhouse women. There right you, there, you go. There you go. So so thank you, Amanda. Many talents. She's producing, doing the the, the audio board for this show. And, and lastly, Stephen, of course, haven't been able to get rid of you. We joke about how many times you've been fired, but you'll never be fired unless you do something really, really, really bad. But I don't think that'll ever happen. <laughs> I, I hope not. Eight years ago, you started uh, fourth show in. You had me in, and then you asked me to come back, and I could not have asked for I, You know, Mike, a lot of people like to play golf. A lot of people have all these different hobbies. I just like to talk and ask good questions, and you have given me a conduit to do that. And after I co-hosted, for the first few episodes, you kept looking at me and going, man, you missed your calling, you missed your calling, you're really good at this. And there was a lot of surprise the first couple times you said it, but then I finally started believing you. And I just, I can't thank you enough for giving me this opportunity because I love my day job, but I I don't have any more fun at doing anything uh, other than being with my family than doing this. And and it's just so much fun. And I thank you for uh, letting me be goofy. And and (laughs) I really enjoy doing this show. You do a great job, and I appreciate the friendship. And this is not work. This this is this is fun. You know, to be able to give back to, to businesses in Gwinnett County and all of Atlanta, to, to build relationships like we have here. You know, not just business relationships, but these are people that you know I think we generally care about as well. It's been the most rewarding thing I've ever done in my career, and I've you know done so much in the past. But again, thank you, Stone. Thank you, Lee, for presenting the opportunity. Want to remind everybody, let's take care of business. That you can find this show on businessradiox.com and all of the podcast platforms out there. iHeartRadio. See, we're on iHeartRadio, yes, Tiffany. You come, are. come back, <laughs> come back. Um, Apple iTunes and all the rest. Also, follow us on social media. Amanda's done a great job taking us to a whole new level there. You guys know all that. At Gwinnett Radio X, we're on Twitter. Twitter, 
Instagram, Facebook, and LinkedIn. So are we singing Kumbaya or We Are the World to finish the show? I've been trying to figure we'll out. We'll do that after the show is right, over. Okay. So again, thank you to our listeners as well. Until next time, Mike here saying so long. You've been listening to Gwinnett Business Radio for eight straight years here on Business Radio X. Thank <laughs> you.